Oh, there we go. Yeah, Kevin is right on time. We just went live, Kevin, so welcome to the call. Just uh, Good morning, guys. Or good afternoon, as the case might be. Yeah, great. Good evening. Yeah, so, hey, Kevin, so we're on the air now. Um, we, we decided, like, let's be disciplined, start on time. Uh, welcome to the second edition of our Google Hangout sessions, our open discussions online with entrepreneurs from all over the world. Now, technically, we're all over the world. We have... Uh, we have Gerald in, in, uh, in Hong Kong, right? Uh, George in Hong Kong. I'm sorry, George in Hong Kong. We had a few people with the, with the, with the name that started with G. That's why I'm so confused about it. Sorry about George. George uh, is in Hong Kong. We have Kevin, who is in North Carolina, and I am in Brussels. Uh, you know, George is with BitSpark, and uh, he's one of those uh, massive disruptors in, in the new currency that's coming up, which are... Bitcoins or cryptocurrencies, I guess. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Kevin is a uh, is my partner in Emerging Frontiers, and you know what? Uh, we're just still waiting for some people to show up. So I know you know Dave is having some trouble uh, signing in. He's somewhere in the middle of the U.S. Uh, there's another gentleman from Ghana who's trying to get in. Now, first, before we start, just a quick message to Google: Please make it simpler to use your Hangouts, because honestly, people who are not used to using it, they have to go through all these hoops and loops and you know, guys, can't you just make it simple? Just leave it. You, you know, you have something going here. We all want to use it, but you're making it hard. Anyway, I, I had to get that off my chest. I had to get that out of the way. Um, but let's 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 start with our conversation. And you know, this is just a jam. If we were musicians, we would be jamming. We're going to riff here, and it all, always depends on who's on these calls. Uh, determines what we're going to talk about. But I think our subject today is pretty clear, isn't it? Let's talk about the new. Um, you know, I. I I think Kevin and I, we, we both pretty much uh, are of the opinion that uh, uh, the new currency of the future is what you're working on right now. Tell us more about what, what, what you're all about, what you're doing. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, so, so yeah, we're, I'm based here in Hong Kong. Um, I'm the CEO and founder of BitSpark. Uh, BitSpark is a cryptocurrency platform that enables people to uh, send money overseas cheaper than you would uh, otherwise using a bank or Western Union. Uh, using Bitcoin as the means of transmission. Uh, and secondly, we're a trading platform. Um, so we enable people to uh, buy and sell cryptocurrency in a number of different markets, um, in a number of different languages, uh, all around the APAC region. So um, so what we're, what we're looking to do, and what we have uh, got a, a lot of uh, notoriety for recently, is our remittance service. Um, primarily, uh, for the last three months, uh, we've been uh, providing remittance service from Hong Kong to the Philippines and Indonesia um, at less than half the price of the competition um, uh, using Bitcoin as the means of transmission. So it's cash in, cash out. Uh, Bitcoin is used to transfer money uh, or Bitcoin is a, a store of wealth uh, and transfer that across borders very easily, frictionless, without the need of a bank. Because um, usually uh, if you wanted to send money, you'd have to go to a bank between the hours of 9 and 5 p.m. Uh, they might have to transfer a currency into another currency for you uh, and then they're going to take a you know, 4 or 5% spread of that one. Then they're going to charge you a fee on top of that. Um, and then you know, every, everything else, you know, maybe it's, uh, you're in a different region where it's, it's hard to access finance or, or to uh, uh, your, your recipient you know, can't pick it up or something like that. So, um, so what we do is we just make it easy. Um, uh, we're, we're, uh, uh, people don't really need to, to learn anything new to use our service. Um, it's just simply the, the cheapest rate, and it's it's cash in, cash out. Your money gets to the other end. So, yeah. so yeah, that, that's what we've been doing here. Hey, George, this is uh, this is Kevin, um, and I just want to say I'm really glad you were able to join this call. I've been following BitSpark for some time, uh, being a, a, a devoted follower of cryptocurrencies and, uh, and 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 Bitcoin in particular. And I think it's really interesting what you're doing because I like uh, I mean I personally think that. You know, one of the two areas where crypto has a bright future is is in remittances, especially cross border. And you've tapped into two of the, I guess, the most significant remittance flows on you know, on the planet, right? Which uh, which are into the Philippines and into Indonesia, um, either from Hong Kong or from other markets. So I'm just curious about your. Uh, 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 about your strategy here, are you, are you focused primarily on Hong Kong at the moment? Are there is there scope to start expanding into other markets where you have a significant number of Filipinos or Indonesians remitting funds back to their families? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the plan is that we're going to be, uh, we, we want to be the, uh, the platform for the Asia Pacific region. Um, and, and then uh, building on from that. So we're in talks with, uh, with customers all around uh, the region, Vietnam, Singapore. Um, we've just set up uh, accounts in Australia as well. Um, so we can enable remittances through all of our different destination currency uh, countries. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, in two months' time, we're going to be uh, unveiling a, a new product in this space, uh, which is going to make things uh, a lot easier for people to get on board with cryptocurrency, wherever they are in the world, doesn't matter. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, what, what we're focused on is, is Bitcoin is a global uh, currency. You can send money to anyone anywhere in the world instantly for free. Um, and if you look at the value proposition in some of these emerging markets, um, you know, there, there's billions of people in the world which don't have a bank account and never will have a bank account. Uh, these are people that are locked out of the current financial system. They, they can't invest, they can't uh, buy, you know, uh, products or invest overseas or send money overseas easily. Um, and the reason for that is because bank accounts are hard to get in some countries, some jurisdictions. Uh, they don't have a, you know, a, a, a financial system um, that's you know, been around for a while. Uh, so, uh, so there are a lot of impediments. However, many of these uh, emerging markets, they're seeing smartphone adoption that's just continuing to rise. And when you look at the value proposition um, to people in these markets, it's, well, do you want to pay a lot of money, spend a lot of time and go to an archaic bank be able to send money, or do you want to download a, a free iPhone app or something, and and you're up and running? You can send money to anyone anywhere in the world instantly, and you're basically your own bank. Um, so uh, I, I think cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, has got the momentum at the moment. Uh, we have a number of different cryptocurrencies on the platform, but uh, yeah, I think it's a real enabler for people all around the world, and that's what's so fantastic about it. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, right? I mean, you look at, I mean, you mentioned. Uh, uh, oh, the difficulty that people in these markets have opening bank accounts. And look, I can tell you firsthand, that's not restricted to frontier markets. Uh, you know, we're we're running a small business in the United Kingdom, and I can tell you that the uh, the process of opening a business bank account with one of the uh, the big, effectively state-owned banks is nightmarish. And I know I'm not the only one who thinks that. Uh, I mean, effectively, what you're seeing is uh, these banks are are practically begging. Uh, people like yourself to come up with alternatives that run them out of business or at least take away significant market share. And I think that it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's inevitable. Um, if it's impossible for people in the Western world to open bank accounts and possible for people in the frontier uh, because they don't have the means to open a bank account that ultimately, you know, a, uh, a frictionless currency such as Bitcoin uh, or any other cryptocurrency with minimal barriers to entry is it's, it's absolutely the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I, I see Bitcoin's yeah, growth, especially right. this year, is uh, um, it, it's more sort of, you know, yes, it's remittance. Um, it's also using some of the technology behind Bitcoin to do some amazing things. Uh, there's things outside of the currency sphere, which you can do with tech, with, uh, with the Bitcoin uh, blockchain technology. But, um, but I, I think also people paying for stuff is, is a big thing. So, uh, you know, why would you pay a credit card or a PayPal surcharge when you can use Bitcoin and it's free? You know, I have an, I have an Australian credit card, but I can't buy uh, products on a U.S. website, even though my Australian credit card is a MasterCard, just like in the U.S., uh, but there's regional restrictions on it. Um, so, you know, businesses around the world are missing out on, uh, you know, business opportunities. So uh, companies that accept Bitcoin um, and, and are starting to, to bring it on board, you've got, you know, billion-dollar companies, Microsoft, Expedia, Dell, all of these people that are bringing it on board now. Um, it's it's just an easier way to pay for things, um, and uh, I, I think you know that there's a lot of potential in, in that as well. Yep. Yeah. Can, can we talk a little bit about the, so there seems to be sort of like a, uh, a smear campaign from the from from uh, against cryptocurrencies, but I think a lot of people have some fundamental misunderstandings about what they are. Right. They're sort of I think they're being sort of cast in the dark in a way because people think it's like you know. This is this is where crime is transacted on, and and in fact, I mean, could could you shed some light on that as being somebody who looks at these things all the time? I think one of the fundamental misperceptions is that uh, there's something dirty about the cryptocurrencies, whereas it's probably rather the opposite, right? There's there's a high le higher level of security and, and the independence of these uh, currencies. That is, that they don't have a monetary authority is quite interesting. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Bitcoin. It, it came to fruition in 2009, um, and uh, and I guess after the GFC, 
um, that there was, uh, I guess, people were looking for for some order. Of, that there's got to be another way, right? So, uh, so, so Bitcoin, what it is, is it's a it's a decentralized uh, digital currency. Uh, it has no issuing authority. Nobody owns or controls it. Um, it it is code which is out there on the internet um, and available for anyone anywhere to use. Um, sorry, did I did I just lose you guys? It's gone blank. <laughs> I'm still there. I think I think we lost Kevin's image there for. Okay. All right, no problem. In a no problem. Yeah, so so Bitcoin is a is a decentralized digital currency. You can you can use it to pay someone anywhere in the world. Um, all of the transactions are traceable um, uh, for for Bitcoin in in what's called a blockchain. And a blockchain is just a ledger. Uh, you think of uh, an an accountant and and what do they do? Well, uh, you know, on a high level, it's um, it's money going in, money going out, and uh, those transactions are on a ledger. So if I pay you one Bitcoin. That's recorded in the ledger for evermore, for history, for the eternity of time, um, right. and uh, everyone in the world uh, has to agree to that. So it means that uh, Bitcoin is accountable as a currency. Uh, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, so it means that I can pay you without any uh, middlemen being involved, without it needing to necessitate anyone else in order to conduct the transaction. Um, and that's one of the the great things about Bitcoin is um, you know everything is traceable. Um, uh, you, you don't need any middlemen. Uh, there is no uh, issuing authority, which I think is a, is a fantastic thing because Bitcoin is, is given value um, by people who actually want to use it, not um, in the case of uh, a currency where you're uh, forced to use it because you, you have to, you have no other option, um, whereas Bitcoin actually has value because people want to use it. Um, so at the moment, you know, the, the price fluctuates. It's, uh, many uh, countries see it as a commodity. Rather than a currency, you know, in the sort of legal classification uh, of of Bitcoin, um, I think that will continue to evolve, and there'll be there'll be places all around the world that uh, that uh, come up with different classifications. But but at the end, uh, at the end of things, you know, it, it is a way to to transfer value around the world, um, and it is a very efficient means for doing that. So uh, so yeah, I, I think uh, Bitcoin as a currency is is a fantastic thing, but also the technology behind it, the ledger. Um, you, you can store all sorts of things in this ledger, so it's not just transaction data, but it uh, it could be anything really. So there's there's other projects around the world that are working on you know, a decentralized cloud. So for example, you know you, you put your files on Google Cloud or you know uh, uh, iCloud or something, um, and really that data stays in in the U.S. in a in a in a uh, a, a data center somewhere uh, somewhere in the world. It's it's physically located there, but there's projects. Where your data is distributed around the world, and it's it's secure, uh, it's it's encrypted, and, and no one entity has control of it. So, I mean, that's just another example of of the Bitcoin technology at use for things other than a currency. But I guess it goes to show that um, it is a very disruptive force in, in things to come. I have a yeah. yeah go ahead, Kevin, if you go. No, I was I was just about to ask, just following up on this. I think uh, just for benefit of the audience, right? Because I think the the majority of the people watch watch uh, this hangout and read our read our content on emerging frontiers they're, they're forward-thinking people right and they're they're always interested in hearing about alternatives to the status quo uh, that being said I think, I think Bitcoin has definitely created a lot of uh, FUD as they say right fear uncertainty and doubt in the world and I, I think it's, it's important to di uh, differentiate between this this currency uh, that has a market value and what you're using, which is basically just the technology that allows for instantaneous transfers of, of value from point A to point B, right? Whether it's from, you know, one building to another building across the street or from Hong Kong to Manila. And I think that's, uh, um, I, I, is, is, is it safe to say that, you're, uh, that, that, that what you're doing with BitSpark is much more a play on the technology and the currency itself, and therefore it's it's uh, it, it, it's probably a more viable technology or a viable, I guess a viable venture than a lot of these uh, these trading platforms that rely on uh, appreciation and value of the Bitcoin currency. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are we're focused on on using the utility of, of Bitcoin. Um, so we're also currency agnostic. So there's not just Bitcoin. There's a number of other you know uh, cryptocurrencies because uh, the, the code itself is free to, to modify and make your own. I could make a George coin if I really wanted to uh, and put that out to the world and 
if everyone ascribes a value to George Coin, then um, then you know it becomes a, a useful means to transact. But uh, what we're looking at is we're using it more of a token, uh, and we're open to to the other uh, you know initiatives, the other innovations that are coming around. You know, every single day there's some some new amazing thing coming out. Um, so so Bitcoin has the momentum. Uh, we're 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 using it as both. Uh, the, the currency and the, the, the token to transact for the remittances, it is a token to transact to transfer to value from one location to another. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's uh, there's a number of different uh, things you can do with that. Um, so so yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. So George, another question I have. So how many serious currencies are there? In, cryptocurrencies are there in circulation right now? <coughs> I looked at your website. I saw something like uh, an odd twenty-ish uh, that are exchangeable. Are there more? Yeah. So, so we offer about uh, twenty different uh, cryptocurrencies yeah. at the moment, or different twenty different trading pairs. Um, but uh, but there's hundreds of different cryptocurrencies, many of which uh, have different pros and cons. So I guess to list a few, um, that there's, there's one called Nubits. Uh, Nubits is a currency which is pegged to the U.S. dollar, um, and uh, and it maintains its value. Uh, without the need of a central bank, they're trying, um, to good, they're trying to be a good boy while being a cryptocurrency, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, I mean that that's one example. There's other uh, cryptocurrencies which are, are pegged to an asset, um, so like a, a, a physical thing. There's one which is you know, pegged to fertilizer, um, and you can exchange, you know, uh, one of these coins for for fertilizer at uh, one of the many different outlets around the world. Um, so it's a way for people to, I guess, arbitrage some of the regional differences in price. Uh, uh, between different regions, um, there's other coins which are focused on privacy, um, and uh, and and they're all about you know um, yeah, uh, uh, having transactions which are, are not all recorded in in a large blockchain. Um, so so yeah, I mean you know because it is is an open framework for anyone to work with. Um, there's a lot of you know people coming up with some great ideas, and uh, whatever idea uh, will survive in the market, we'll see. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're open to to whatever. Uh, idea people actually choose. Um, so so yeah, we, we we support a number of them. I have very anecdotal knowledge about this, so I, I, I absolutely didn't spend that much time on it. But the other thing that somebody uh, that, that I heard about is that so uh, the the cryptocurrencies each currency exists in a finite amount, right? They issue a finite number, uh, or, or is that not true? Or is it just very? Or does it depend on the currency? That's true. Uh, so. Uh, Bitcoin itself uh, has 21 million Bitcoins that are ever going to exist, ever. Um, there's currently 11 million that have been produced, and they're produced at a rate of 25 every 10 minutes on average. Uh, so so it, it's much like what Bitcoin aims to do is it's much like an asset like gold, whereby there's a limited supply and they're mined at a certain rate. So there's a certain amount of gold in the Earth's crust, uh, and it's mined at a certain rate. Um, and it's it's a deflationary asset, you know. As as more people want to use it, uh, the price goes up because there's a limited supply of it available. Um, the same theory goes for Bitcoin. So um, so yeah, I mean, a, a Bitcoin. That there's a whole story about how it's produced. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's that number is actually set by by the network. No, you know, one person is sitting there going, oh, this is how many is going to exist now. Um, it, it's actually the algorithm and, and computers which decide it uh, between themselves. Okay, so that's is that the standard for the term cryptocurrency? For example, that cryptocurrency is pegged to the dollar is going to get in trouble. It's going to bifurcate, right? Eventually, that. That's, yeah, that's yeah. So I mean, there's an infinite. It's been proven to be an infinite supply of. Uh, there's a printer in Washington that keeps printing. Yeah, I mean, you know, with with many fiat currencies around the world, uh, it's as long as you've got a, fi a, a, a printing press, then uh, no worries. You can you can print as much of it as you like. Uh, whereas you know, that's that's something which cryptocurrency is an intrinsic thing with it is that you can't print more than uh, than you're allowed to which which is a fantastic thing so uh, in the case of the one which is pegged to the US dollar uh, perhaps that's not a good uh, investment long term um, but uh, I guess it has appeal for merchants which are uh, are weary about uh, the volatility in the Bitcoin price you know right now um, so that they can hold something which is going to have you know similar value tomorrow um, but uh, but yeah I mean uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of different uh, exciting things around the place, but I, I think the the nature of Bitcoin um, and uh, and it, its lack of you know uh, uh, someone that can come in you know regardless of the political situation and print more money uh, in the fiat world um, with with Bitcoin that's that's not possible, and I think that's a great thing because it means that uh, people's savings are are uh, um, you know if, if you save money you're rewarded.
um, and and especially in many emerging markets, uh, many people are you know large savers. Um, so so I think that is a very important thing to have. Mm. George, I've got a question about your uh, just your, your business model, and maybe we could just for benefit of the audience just talk a little bit about how the mechanics of what Bitspark does works. And correct me if I'm wrong on this, but uh, I, you know, I've, look, I've looked at Bitspark before. You're obviously familiar with BitPesa uh, in Kenya. You probably heard about uh, about that company, and they're doing things quite similar to you, just in a different part of the world. But my understanding is, so you've got a customer in Hong Kong who wants to send money back to their family in, say, Manila, right? So the uh, the 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 Hong Kong-based customer converts their Hong Kong dollars into Bitcoin, right? And then they log into the Bitspark system, and they load they load up bitcoins into their account. Uh, they hit the transmit button to send coin uh, their their bitcoin to the uh, receiving account in the Philippines, and then that those bitcoins are immediately converted into Philippine pesos, correct? And then that's that that's remitted to the receiving party. That and so basically the the transmission the process is nearly instantaneous, right? It, it takes less than say an hour to remit those funds from point A to point B. Yeah, well, it's actually even simpler than that. In that, uh, customers, what happens is customers come up to us with their Hong Kong dollars. Uh, they say that they want to to send it to the recipient in say the Philippines uh, to a bank account, uh, and we manage all of the the Bitcoin stuff behind the scenes. Uh, we right. don't actually advertise. Uh, that, that we do anything to do with Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is just happens in the background, uh, and it's the means of transferring value. So uh, as far as our customers are concerned, uh, their money is just getting to the Philippines a lot cheaper than the competition is. Um, right. So, so yeah, I mean, what we do is is we take the Hong Kong dollars, we exchange it for Bitcoin, and we sell the Bitcoin um, you know, in, in another country, uh, in the destination country, for the local currency. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, using BitSpark, um, is is very easy to do and uh, and yeah I mean that's that's what we're going with um, many of the other different uh, companies around the world um, all they are is um, well, I guess they're just converting Bitcoin to the local currency um, however there's a disconnect there because how do people get Bitcoin in the first place uh, in some cases it's quite hard um, whereas uh, we're we're managing the whole process in fact we're the first in the world to do uh, cash in cash out remittances using Bitcoin so. Um, so what that means is we just simplify the process, uh, just just uh, make it easy and, and people will use it. Um, but, yeah. So your so your customer never even has to understand what Bitcoin is, what the Bitcoin price is, and you're able to reasonably uh, you're reasonably able to uh, provide uh, yeah same value rece uh, received to the same value sent because the time that you actually pull that value in Bitcoin because Bitcoin is still is a it's it's a relatively volatile currency. Uh, you you minimize the time that that uh, that 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 monetary value is held in Bitcoin, and you convert from Hong Kong dollars to Bitcoin to back out the Philippine pesos as quickly as possible. Correct? Absolutely. Yes. Correct. So uh, so it's it's done instantly. So there's there's no volatility risk. Um, no. Okay. I, I I have one question for you. Uh, looks like we have somebody joined the call. So I'll just I just put one more question about your business model, and uh, um, I guess the and a lot of people are probably going to ask this, but effectively your model, like the success or the viability of your model, depends upon having a bank on the receiving end that's willing to accept Bitcoin and convert back into receiving currency, like the, like the, uh, the, the peso, correct? So how confident are you in the banking relationship that you, that you have at the moment? Well, actually, on the receiving end, it's us. Um, so what we are in our trading platform is in order to uh, exchange currencies between two locations, you need a liquidity pool uh, at both ends. So you need people willing to exchange cash in one currency for Bitcoin or cash in another currency for Bitcoin. So uh, what we are with our trading platform is we enable people to deposit their local currency into our platform um, to, to ex expand the number of currencies that we offer. And then we always have liquidity available um, in, in order for to, to, to sell those Bitcoin. Um, and of course, you know, if there's a lot of sales taking place on one market, then it becomes an attractive place for traders to trade on because the price is lower, because the price has been depressed, because a lot of people are selling. So, you know, in, it, it keeps the price levels and arbitrages any of the differences in the market uh, to keep the, the rate uh, very competitive. So, um, the banking relations, I guess, are important, but 
every country is different. In some places, so for example in Indonesia, um, it's mainly post offices that people collect money from, uh, right. and that's around the country. Yeah, around the country. In the Philippines, it's like physical uh, cash outlets, like private businesses, um, and and yeah, you know, bank accounts. Not that large a percentage of the population has them, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean it, it's still something to consider. So I mean, yeah, each country is different. You just got to be aware of that, and uh, yeah, provide the means for people to get money uh, into into the system in the first place. In which case, that's that's Pittsburgh. Wow, absolutely amazing. So we just had Gerard popping up there from Ghana, and he, he left already. Uh, uh, that, uh, let's see if he comes back, because he's running an e-commerce business in Ghana. And, and we had Kelly before from the Howard University, but hopefully these people will, uh, will dial in again. Uh, ah, hold on, we have Gerard coming back on the call right now. Good. Gerard, welcome back. You, you, you yeah, thanks. Uh, I had a, a challenge connecting. That's why I'm a bit late. So I hope you guys will forgive me. No, we forgive you. We forgive you. Absolutely. We're so delighted. Right, right. Us. You're, you're, um, you're in Ghana, right? Am I correct? Yes, on yes. That? Accra. I'm in Accra, Ghana. Oh, fantastic city. I love that place. Uh, I have good memories of it. Hey, but you know, um, this, is, this is this thing about hangouts. People walk in and out. It's kind of fun, isn't it? It's a, we, you know, Gerard. We have Kevin in North Carolina, and we have George in Hong Kong, and now you're in Ghana. So we have, and I'm in Brussels. So we've got four continents here. Isn't that awesome? Gerard, you're an entrepreneur. Okay. You're, you're okay. An Interesting. I, 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 uh, yeah. I had a, I had a quick, because uh, you know, another thing is these things, since they're improvised, we don't really prepare too much for them. We just want to see what, what comes out of these conversations. But Gerard, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you're in that wonderful place. Uh, you're an entrepreneur. You're in e-commerce. E tell us a little bit about what, what you're up to. All right. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. OK. All right. Um, so I run Ahunya here. Ahunya.com is uh, like the Amazon of Ghana. That's what we are trying to build. And uh, we started whilst we were still back in college uh, three years ago. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, our total revenue launch is 1.2 million US dollars. And uh, we raised $155,000 from two investors in the last two years. And uh, so we just started our. our a new uh, fundraising round that we want to do to uh, expand our operations to the rest of West Africa. Yeah, so um, you know we, we we have a lot of challenges here. Some of them include logistics, uh, getting the products to the customer who who ordered an item, and uh, uh, getting people to to pay online. You know, payment systems are not so uh, developed, uh, so uh, there are a few challenges there and. Uh, some of the players in the market use uh, cash on delivery, like they take the item to the person and they take cash uh, as, as, a, as a way of doing e-commerce. But uh, as of now, we do only online payments. So people either pay with credit cards or they use mobile money to, to pay on our website. And it's, it's working well for us at the moment. So. Uh, that's how far we've come. I don't know if you have any specific questions or if uh, I missed out anything. Maybe I can I can add that as the conversation sure. goes along. Yeah. First of all, I want to introduce you to George on the screen there because he's in he's in the uh, cryptocurrency business, so he may be able to solve a problem for you there. You know. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you can start accepting Bitcoin in Ghana. There, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that would pay off somehow, you know. There's, there's always stuff going on here. Yeah. No, but so, um, so yeah, I, ha I have some questions. Uh, I mean, uh, you, you must be. Uh, so, so if, if if you are an e-commerce in Ghana, to me that that seems like that you you have to sort of navigate a lot through SMS, right? Text messages. Is are, is, that, is that most of your business, or is it actually uh, more online than we would believe it is? I didn't get that. Uh, can you repeat that again, so, okay. please? Maybe another way to ask the question is how how important is text messaging in your um, uh, to, for you to communicate with your clients, or are you one hundred percent on that? Um, yeah, text messaging is mostly for other notifications. You know, um, when uh, someone places an order, they want to know if this uh, transaction actually went through, and uh, the best way to know 
not always through SMS because um, if you send an email, uh, if the person doesn't have a smartphone, it's, it's harder for them to to check. So the best is to notify via SMS. So um, if you look at our order from when the, the customer enters their email address to when they, they enter their credit card information or they pay with mobile money, they are always uh, notified with SMS. And when we do delivery to we use SMS to notify. So it's a very important component of uh, the net flow of, of the whole business. Yeah. We just published an article recently about, well, I think yesterday actually, about that the 2015 could probably be the year of the smartphone because it's probably going to take an acceleration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you guys are really well. Yeah, yeah. We've seen that, right? A lot of smartphone uh, growth uh, over time. Looking at our statistics, um, uh, at the moment, 40% uh, of all orders we receive are from phones. And uh, from the way we are projecting, uh, the, the, the usage is going to grow. So uh, we, are, we are even working on a mobile app to take advantage of the smartphone boom in Ghana at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I think you're really well positioned. So, so Gerard, tell me, how did you get involved in this? Is this a... Uh... Are you, uh, did you, did you learn this somewhere else and came to Ghana set this up or uh, tell us a little bit about your story on becoming an e-commerce entrepreneur. How we founded the company. Yeah. What's, what's the story behind it? I mean, is it, is it been a lot around for long or? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I was, uh, at, at college, back at college, I, I, I was doing biological sciences with, uh, a couple of friends, and uh, uh, we we were so fascinated by Google. You know, when we, we we found Google and what we could do online with Google, we were so happy. So uh, I became a Google ambassador, and uh, I used to uh, teach students how they can use YouTube, Docs, and uh, Gmail, and and the other Google products to to enhance their their courses. So along the way, I just thought like, well, I could. The same way that I, I can help students with Google tools, I can help businesses with those tools. So we created a company called Mastermind eBusiness Solutions, and uh, we used to build websites and uh, provide, you know, services uh, for these companies. And uh, um, because we were still on campus, the revenue wasn't much. At least it was enough to pay for broadband and uh, get uh, uh, some some other stuff, accommodation and those things. So. Um, many people asked us how they could buy from Amazon whilst they were on campus. You know, there were some books they needed for their courses and uh, they didn't have credit cards to buy online. So we had credit cards and we used to place the orders and then get it for them. So we, we felt like, you know, if we can do this for this uh, small amount of people on campus, why can't we do this for the whole gun? And uh, that is how the whole thing started. And we founded Ahunya, we bought the site. And uh, so initially, we didn't keep any inventory. What we did was we bought a crawler to just crawl Amazon and other websites to bring the, the inventory. The, that's uh, like electronic inventory, if I am allowed to use that term. And uh, so when you go to the website, we are able to calculate um, everything from shipping margins, the estimates, and everything in, do, in in Ghana cities. So you just select the item you want to buy, you pay, and uh, within five to seven business days, we do the delivery for you. So it was kind of an interesting model. The only difference was the delivery time was a bit on the high side because the, the, the items were shipping from, from Amazon. So it took five to seven business days. Right. So um, we, we did that, and we had uh, over... 200 deliveries uh, in and around the campus and the whole of Ghana. And uh, we approached Savannah Fund, uh, an early stage uh, accelerator in Nairobi, Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, their model works like uh, they give you $25,000 to prove your model. And uh, if you are successful in that, they, they are able to link you to other investors or even follow on with uh, additional capital. So. We had the 25k. I moved to Kenya with uh, my CTO, and uh, we spent uh, four months in Nairobi to uh, fine tune the business model and learn management and uh, the other facets of, of, of doing the business. So um, 
yeah, that's how it started. When we came back to Ghana, we 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 we, we set up an office in Accra, and uh, we started doing the uh, expanding the inventory with some of the local retailers as well. And uh, yeah, so we uh, during the Savannah Savannah Fund demo day, we 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 had interest from Rio Capital. It's a, a Dubai-based uh, early-stage tech investor, and they focus on. Um, African startups. So we raised uh, some uh, seed fund from them to to expand operations and to hire some, some team members to join the team and all that. So that's how the story has been. You know, it's a lot of challenges in between every stage. You know, the normal. Well, I mean, you know, because the way you, say, you make it look so simple. Then we went to these guys and they gave us money. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not simple, but you make it look. Yeah, not so awesome. simple, but you know, I, I had to just summarize it. <laughs> I know. But good for you. Congratulations. That's that's quite amazing. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> hey, Jor, I had a question about your uh, about your product line. I mean, I'm looking at the Ahonia.com website right now, and it looks okay. like uh, yeah, you focus quite heavily on electronics, uh, primarily smartphones. Uh, yeah. Can you just talk about like what's the product breakdown? Like what's what's in most demand amongst your customers? Uh, what are you selling the most of? At the moment, smartphones versus PCs or video games versus clothing. Can you just tell us a little bit about that. Okay, uh, so for now, it's mostly smartphones and accessories. You know, uh, we, we realize that if someone buys uh, an iPhone from you, in a couple of days, the person will come back to buy an iPhone case for the iPhone that they already bought from us. So it's mostly smartphones and tablets, and that, that's that's where we have. Uh, most of our sales coming from, and uh, sometimes uh, getting to the, the, the you know e-commerce has a lot of seasonality attached. So getting towards Christmas, we're able to sell more clothes, uh, more fashion items, and uh, depending on the trends. But it's mostly smartphones. PC sales, um, it's, it's not growing. It's, it's kind of flat. But smartphones and tablets are always growing. Sure. And what yeah. about the? I mean. Talk to us a little bit about payment terms. Uh, how do most of your customers pay? I mean, I've looked at a lot of e-commerce platforms in frontier markets, and uh, from my experience, a lot of customers pay uh, COD, cash on delivery. Uh, yeah. Is, is that yeah. the same? Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there are other e-commerce sites in Ghana that do COD. We have a. Uh, uh, Rocket Internet, Jumia.com, and uh, KMO, they do cash on delivery. But um, we, we did an analysis of our business model and realized that it wouldn't make sense for us to do cash on delivery. Because uh, if we are buying an item from Amazon and it's going to take five to seven business days to get to Accra, and uh, we have to take it to the person's uh, office doorstep before we get the cash, it means we were going to take a lot of risk. Because if there's a return, then that means we wouldn't be able to uh, cater for it. So we, we, we strictly take payments before we do delivery. And uh, we take payment through mobile money. Mobile money takes 80% uh, of all the transactions. Uh, we have MTN mobile money, Tigo Cash, and Airtel money. That's that's the, the three main mobile money services available in Ghana. And uh, we have some affluent customers as of ours who use uh, credit cards. But... Um, because of a lot of fraud in Ghana and the rest of West Africa, a credit card form is not available on the website. So normally we just send a, a link to the customers that we trust can, you know, guys uh, uh, have credit cards and we know them and we know they are genuine and they pay with credit cards. But uh, aside of those customers, all other people pay with Okay. Can you still hear us? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, no, that, that, that's really interesting. And you uh, you mentioned that you so you've already raised some money from I think you said from uh, Savannah Fund. Um, you know, we, we we know those guys. Yeah. Uh, they they've got a really good reputation in the uh, on the continent. Yeah. Um, are you still raising capital from? Um, and if so, like what yes. what are you looking for at the moment? Yeah, 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 yeah. We just started. Uh, Raising the next round uh, last month, we started uh, doing the preparations from last year, but uh, we we hit through last month and uh, 
we've had some positive response uh, from the yeah, the local investor community, and uh, we are looking at uh, some other investors from Europe and uh, uh, the rest of Africa, and uh, see how it goes. But uh, at the moment, we've not had any commitment from any investor. We wanted to raise a million dollars to expand operations and uh, launch some other platforms that we, we, we've developed. Uh, we, we, we have uh, two other products that uh, um, uh, should I say in beta, in beta. We have uh, a, an e-commerce store builder called mayahunya.com. I can type the link uh, for you uh, so you could check it out. Um, let me just see where I can type it. Okay. Yeah. Also, also send it to us so we can include it into the blog post. Where we yeah, yeah. I guess I guess type it there. Yeah. So it's uh, mayahunya.com. Basically, it's like the Shopify for for Africa on the on the broader scale because we are targeting mostly merchants in Africa, and uh, it enables you to create your own e-commerce store and have payment systems uh, integrated and uh, delivery integrated. Uh, we realized that some of the merchants we're working with uh, for inventory for Amunia.com also wanted to sell online and they didn't have the technology. Uh, they didn't know how they were going to enable payments online and uh, delivery was going to be hard for them. So we integrated all those things into one product called Mayahunya and uh, so far we have 24, uh, 24 merchants that we are working with and uh, they, are, they, they set up their stores and uh, they are like beta testers, so uh, we, 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 we are thinking that if we are able to close our next round of fundraising, uh, we'll be able to expand it and uh, get some more merchants on the platform. So, Gerard, uh, just a quick question. Uh, what were you sort of looking at in terms of expansion? Um, like, were you looking at um, elsewhere in Ghana, or were you looking at uh, other countries in Africa, or, or how, how easy or hard is that to do? Uh, from from Ghana. Okay. You know, Ghana is not a very big country, so uh, a lot of the com a lot of the time, if you want to build a really huge company, you have to look at uh, getting a market outside Ghana. And so, um, at the moment, Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa, and uh, it's just our, at our doorstep. So. Uh, reasonably, Nigeria, well, the to, Nigerian three or four countries, but then they're there, but that's like really next door, right? <laughs> I, I didn't get you. I, I always I always uh, find it amusing when people from Ghana say Nigeria is just next door, even though you have to jump over three or four countries. But you know, it's <laughs> 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 just like build a tunnel yeah, it's, or something. It, it, actually, <laughs> the, the fact is, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's that way. But it's easier to get to go to Nigeria than to go to Benin. Yeah, you know, they are they, 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 even right. if you are booking a flight. <laughs> Uh, if you are getting a flight from Accra to Lagos, it's very easy, but it's kind of difficult to get a flight from Accra to Kotonou. Uh, Accra. Yeah, which is Benin. So that, that, that's <laughs> yeah. So uh, our plan is to go to the, the the Nigerian market. Actually, there's a lot of competition in Nigeria. There are two big e-commerce companies there already. That is. Um, Conga.com and Jumia.com. So if we are going to have to enter the Nigerian market, it means we have to refine our strategy and uh, make sure we have a model that is uh, more cash efficient and uh, uh, we, we find a way to easily acquire customers. So we are still thinking. Uh, um, and uh, another area for expansion is Franco Francophone West Africa, the French-speaking uh, countries in Africa. Uh, West Africa, like Togo, Benin, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, and uh, the other surrounding countries also presents a nice opportunity for us. Over there, there's not much competition, and uh, the entry barriers are not so great, so we can we can easily uh, the launch operations there. So yeah, th that that's what we want to do uh, in the next uh, few months this year, and we have another. Um, that I'm just typing it in the uh, in the chat uh, box. That is not uh, available for customers at the moment, but for just uh, for this discussion, I just wanted to to show it. It's uh, it's we really wanted to experiment. Uh, we wanted to do an experiment with that the last Christmas, but uh, we had to push it because we didn't want to 
uh, spend a lot of money and energy in launching that and miss the the revenues that we normally get doing Christmas. So we 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 waited a little bit on it. It's a penny auctions platform. It's a pay to bid service. So you buy bid packs and uh, you bid on brand new items that we list on the item uh, on the on the on the platform. So. Um, for instance, we could have an iPhone 6 there, and uh, you buy bid pass. So, anytime you bid a uh, amount of money, and uh, the last bid wins the item, and they can buy it at very low prices. So, you can just check it at uh, ahunya.bid. It's something you want to easily scale that to Nigeria or to uh, any other country. Awesome. Okay, so, great. Um, this is fantastic, isn't it? So I think uh, so. We have uh, Africa, Europe, the U.S., Asia, and may I also say Australia, right? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stick to yeah, Australia pretty well. much. <laughs> you're, you're an Australian ambassador in Hong Kong. So yeah, uh, you know, this is what this is all about, right? This is people from all over the world, entrepreneurs, communicating, talking to each other, connecting. Uh, you can be on this show too. I would love to have you if you if you have a if you're on an entrepreneurial adventure. Or you have yeah, experience. sorry guys, I, I can't hear what you are saying. I let me just change uh, okay. my position a little bit and see if the the connection will be better. No worries. Well, I'm, 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 we're sort of like closing right. out the show yes, for today, moment. so yeah, we're sort of like closing out the show. So if you want to be on on our on our hangouts, you're absolutely welcome. A good way to stay in tune with what we're doing is by. Uh, joining our community, if you go to our website, you can sign up with your email right here. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty simple to do. Alternatively, another way uh, that you can get in touch with us is just by sending us uh, an email on uh, concierge at emergingfrontiers.com. Uh, you know, we'll be happy to uh, to put you on a list as well. By all means, uh, get in touch with us. That's what we built this for. Hold on, man. I got a little screen freeze. Okay, we're fine. That's what we built it for. It's the community that brings entrepreneurs, investors, and anybody who's involved in business uh, in emerging and frontier markets or interested in it. Uh, we can all come together here. So let's uh, let's leave it at that, gentlemen. This was fascinating. We have uh, I think you could say it's more like a tech version of our online discussions, but uh, I'm looking forward to connecting more with you guys and having you more on, on the show. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Gerard and uh, George. Yeah, please. Uh, by the way, uh, any last words you want to say uh, before we end the program? Um, yeah, I just go ahead, Gerard. <laughs> you you go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I, I just wanted to thank everyone for the for the opportunity today. Um, I, I guess I hope I. Uh, was uh, able to educate uh, uh, people that perhaps uh, weren't aware of Bitcoin or, or, or what it's about and some of the potentials. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you've got any questions, um, uh, be sure to, to, to come to BitSpark, send us an email. Um, that's that's no worries. We, we, we can get get back to you. So um, so yeah, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, no, we definitely are. We're gonna we're gonna pick your brain some more on, on this topic. So be ready for that. Awesome. Right. Thank. You. All yours, Gerard. All right. Um, I just wanted to ask uh, about Emerging Frontiers, uh, the portal. I was speaking with Tyler yesterday, and uh, he was telling me you guys have a rigorous way of uh, assessing startups before you, you put them on your plan. So I just to find out uh, the criteria for selection. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to, uh, to look at that. I mean, again, that's why we built it. So. Uh, Let's have that conversation. Let's uh, let, let's take a let's take a look at what you need and uh, how we can help you. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Hey, Ger uh, Gerard. Yeah. Any any uh, are there any last words or any points you'd like to make on uh, before we uh, before we end the program here? Okay. Yeah. I, I think it's it's my first time and uh, it's kind of uh, interesting. So. I don't know if you have it on a regular basis or um, something uh, it's something that is ongoing or this uh, the last or maybe I can join another time. It's an ongoing effort and I know once you do this you get addicted. It's very addictive this Google Hangout thing. 
I can't I right. can stop doing it. I mean, so if, if you want to come on again, you're always welcome. All right, all right, all right. Thanks a lot. So that's about it. All right, gentlemen. Let's get out of here. Enough already. Thanks very much. Uh, take care. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Really appreciate yeah. you joining today. Thanks. Bye. Bye.